Now, obviously, the debt ceiling is a big deal. We've, we, we're, if, if, if a bill doesn't pass, we're going to hit the derp ceiling in five days. Five days. And um, we're doomed. And, uh, well, everybody except, uh, well, everybody who works for a living. Uh, obviously, rich people will just buy the dip. Um, but uh, the, the thing about Republicans is that in their populist fervor, they have uh, they've pretty much attached their, they've, they've hitched their wagon to a lot of mid-level businesses that don't, they can't just skate on stock market bumps and dips. So uh, they're having to actually pass this fucking thing too. So Chip Roy is out there. He's the front of these idiots who are trying to get, you know, Republicans to stand firm and not vote for the deal that the guy they elected leader negotiated with the guy who's president of the fucking country. So, <laughs> um, it's just, yeah, it's a good time. So, um, let's, let's hear it from the horse's mouth right away. This is, uh, um, this is, uh, um, who's Kevin McCartney? No, it's Kevin McCarthy. And, uh, he's got his own, his own McCarthyism. Uh, he's scared of his own reds at this point. They're all going to, um, basically, as soon as this passes, somebody's going to do a motion to vacate, and we're going to have a, a very entertaining post debt ceiling week. We really are. I'm very excited. So, um, <laughs> all right. Yes, the Target boycott people are the same people that will get fucked if the debt ceiling doesn't get suspended. So, uh, here we go. This is, uh, this is, Mac this is McCarthy champions debt deal, biggest cut in American history. You tell him, man. He's on Fox and he's just giving him what for. Yes. Uh, oh, and by the way, uh, Kill Me, they've sent Kill Me to a restaurant to talk to Blue Hairs. And that's why the other two hosts are genuinely smiling. In case you're wondering. You're like, wow, the, the smiles on their face don't look pained and fake. That's because Kill Me's, uh, I think, over, you know, he's, yeah, he's about a thousand miles away. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, these, uh, there's a lot of people here, the VIPs. You got generals, you have colonels, you have small business owners. Yes, I, I will say, um, you, you have not lived until you've uh, eaten at the Cracker Barrel, um, the, the flagship Cracker Barrel in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. Uh, all concerned about the country. This is one of the most uh, patriotic places in the nation, and a lot of mm. them are here today, and they're big time viewers. And it's going to be, uh, it's going to be special. Yes, because they would tell you if they weren't. She'll talk to them shortly, including an Eagle Scout. But right now, I want to br bring in one of the busiest guys in America, who's got a lot on the line this week. How he's got a lot on the line. Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Mr. Speaker, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Good. Thanks for having me all the way down even in Florida. Hey, 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 you're in Florida. Hey, it says you're in Florida. Look at you. You're down there in Florida. I'm a I, I politician for a living. I po I know how to politics for people. Right. I, I know how hard you guys worked on this deal, but it's going to be a nail biter, it seems, uh, going down to the wire. How concerned are you about the, the bill that you cobbled together getting out of committee? Well, look, uh, it's a different Congress. It's a new day. It's not that you have to pass the bill to find out what's in it. You got 72 hours. This isn't a thousand page bill. This is 99 pages. And this is different than we've ever had before. We're Because it's not, it's just, it's mild modifications in other stuff as a trade off for raising the debt ceiling. You didn't, it's, I mean, calling it a bill is technically what it is. But it ain't a bill. Get the fuck out of here. You didn't you didn't dream up maybe we should have crossing uh, barriers at railroad tracks so school buses don't get hit. Actually going to spend less money this year than we spent last year. Yes, and we spent less money last year than we did the year before because Biden has been cutting the deficit the entire time he's been in office. And... And your viewers have heard me give this analogy before. Well, you're nothing if not boring. But, you know... Since Kilmeade's in Florida, perhaps he, you should tell him again. A debt limit is like the family having a credit card. Fuck you. No, it isn't. No, it is not. It is not like the family having a credit card.
All right. We'll get through it, but I hate this fucking analogy. It's dumb. But you've been charging it up every year and just keep lifting the limit. Dear God, imagine if, let's say, your child uh, graduates high school and goes to college and they get their first credit card and they've got $3,000 limit on there and they pay it fairly regularly and they run some stuff up, but eventually they, you know, they, they need more credit so eventually they get a bigger credit card as they become an adult and then after that they had a student loan on top of that so they borrowed the three thousand dollars or five thousand dollar limit on their card but they also pay for some of their classes temporarily on their credit card and then they get reimbursed through their through a scholarship or other payments and you know for financial aid or whatever like that and then they got student loans for the rest of it and their their debt has expanded from a three thousand dollar card to a five thousand dollar card to fifty thousand dollars worth of student loan debt and then it's at some point, these fucking idiots buy a house, get a car, have a phone with a plan, and all this stuff. It's almost as, as it, if every human being who graduates high school develops credit equal to the size of their fucking life. <laughs> ah. This year's different. We now say we're going to spend less. Now, unfortunately... No, not now. It, it, again, Biden cut the deficit last year, too. I wasn't able to look at all what we spend our money on because the mandatory spending, Social Security, Medicare, that's all off to the side. So I can only look at about 15% of what we spend our money on. Yeah, you heard that right. They want to tank the fucking economy for an arm wrestle over 15 fucking percent of the budget. So what we did is, in elements like non-defense, that's going to go below 2022 levels. So that's a very positive. But the... Well, 2022 and 2023, those, those like social programs were elevated because of COVID. And so dropping them down to 2019, in many cases, still makes them above current inflation. The other thing we did, we put ourselves on a spending plan. We cap how much we can spend for the next six years with government. But we also did something different. In this family, we may have a child that uh, able-bodied, not married, no kids, but he's sitting on the couch collecting welfare. Yes, that child is between the ages of 50 and 55 because the snap changes that they made only apply to human beings who are able-bodied, who are 50 to 55 years old, and not their children, just them having the work requirements and, and with, with uh, like ex exemptions for homeless people, people with children and veterans. <laughs> We're gonna put work requirements on that individual. Yes, an individual between 50 and 55 who is able-bodied, who is on SNAP, all nine of them so he's going to have work requirement. He's going to get a job. And it's, it's a he. Notice it's a he. It's just a he. It's going to make the life easier. But we're also. Sorry, what was that sentence? Again? Individual. So he's going to have work requirement. He's going to get a job and it's going to make the life easier. And he's going to make the life easier. I am doing the politics. Speaking thoughts and words. But we're also going to look at places we've been spending our money that we've wasted that we're going to return, right? Oh, by the way, n no, there is unspent COVID money allocated above and beyond what was necessary. And they're just pulling it back, which the Biden administration has been doing from each budget past 2021 anyways. Like all that COVID money that we didn't... Right. What I say. What what I say. What I fucking say. What I say. Spin. We're going to bring it back. But one of my favorites here is four hundred million for CDC, the global fund, where we'd where use that hardworking taxpayer money over to China. We're not going to do that. We're going to send that back. And then we. Did we're going to send that back. Okay. For okay, money you're not going to spend. We weren't going to send that money anyways. Ugh. A number of other things here, right? One of the things that's very interesting did that the president has been spending money wildly. If he wants to put a new regulation in, we took a executive order of President Trump's and now we're putting it into law and making it a little tougher. Where if he wants to put a new regulation in, he has to cut government if it costs more than a hundred million. And then
How many? How many fucking? <laughs> First of all, how many regulations can you put in that cost more than a hundred million dollars to implement? Seriously, especially when the major the vast majority of, of you you put them into law and private companies and citizens have to abide by that regulation so they don't dirty up the rivers and streams and shit. Cost who a hundred million dollars? Good Lord. We looked at things about cutting the red tape that we get so- Oh, at the hall. Red tape is way more expensive than clear tape. We're using scotch tape. I got a, I got a bulk deal at Costco. Frustrated that we can't build the roads. It takes seven years. We now reform NEPA, the environmental review. Instead of waiting seven years, now the studies are only one to two years. This hasn't been done in 40 years. Yeah, because of technology. And then we did something interesting to make government or make Congress consequences for their lack of action. They have 12 appropriation bills that they have to pass every year, and they never do, and they come back with that omnibus. Fuck you mean they, motherfucker? You're the speaker. Now we say, if you don't do your job, it's a 1% a cut across the board. So encourage members. That's not a... That's just incentivizing the Chip Roy's of the world to delay the fucking appropriations, stupid. That just means it's gonna be more of a fight just getting them to do the goddamn thing every time. Because if you wanna cut it, all you gotta do is is cross your arms and, and stomp your feet. It's a Congress. Not now with the new Congress, you actually show up. You now you're gonna have to work. This is gonna be the biggest cut. Oh, that's why MTG wanted to quit. Uh, now I get it. By the Congressional Budget Office says, in history of where we're going forward, to do- <laughs> Wait, well, look at the cutback. Look at Kilmeade looking at him when, we, when they cut to him. Because, I mean- Biggest cut by the Congressional Budget <laughs> Office says, in history of where we're going forward. To do all that, we allowed the debt ceiling to go forward for the next 18 months, and we'll readdress it, hopefully with a Republican president and a Republican Senate, to even make it stronger. <laughs> All right, Mr. Speaker, uh, we want to play you these two sound bites. This is, uh, these are two in the GOP that are saying they're voting no, and we'll get your reaction on the other side. Here's Chip Roy. Mm hmm. Yeah, we, we know. And, and here's a sad moment with Brian Kilmeade. Wait a minute. Everybody seems like they're having a good time, except me. And uh, Ralph Norman. There's going to be a block of us that are a no, and I hope that more Republicans will join with us and stand up. I would like to say that we should kill this. We should move forward. We should pass a short-term uh, debt ceiling change. Let's not lift the debt. Four trillion dollars. Again, I want to repeat that for America. Four trillion dollars. We are going to have an uncapped, actually, debt ceiling that will equal four trillion that expires in a lame duck. In, on January 1st, 2025, and for that, we do not get substantive policy reforms on any of the green tax subsidies, the corporate... Oh, a lame duck. So you guys don't think you're going to win the House back? That's interesting. Bernieism? I think we need to call our bluff. And there is... Oh, uh, we do need to call our own bluff. Have you ever called your own bluff? I, 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 when I was a child, we used to go ride into town, take a fresh, shiny quarter with us, call our own bluff and hang up. Any time that you walk away from negotiations, and this is one of them, they're not serious. Biden dithered for over 100 days, and no deal is better than a bad deal. And this is a bad deal for America. No deal is better than a bad deal, except when no deal means a really, really bad deal. Fuck. Anyways. And it, it's, it should not move forward. Mr. Speaker, they're both on the Rules Committee. You need their votes to move forward, and you're going to need Democrats. Well, we're going to sit down. We're going to talk today, a little today, have people come in. It's the first time they're back to be able to walk through the bill. I mean, read the Wall Street Journal. They say it's a very good bill. You look Yeah, and that Rupert Murdoch owns that, and he owns your network. And Trump loves him. Time and again. What's interesting, compare it to other debt ceilings. When we had the presidency, the Senate, and the House, they just raised the debt ceiling with no cuts. It was just a clean debt ceiling. We only have the House. The president said he wouldn't even negotiate with us, but we were able to get in there. This is the biggest cut in American history that we'd vote for. And mm -mm. No. 
I'm, I'm just here to tell you, uh, cuts in the hundreds of millions, uh, dealing only with 15% of the budget and only about 5% of that 15%. No. And I'm not sure where in here, there's no new taxes, there's no new government programs. Yeah, because it's not that kind of bill, stupid. You don't understand. Your people want to burn the fucking place down. Would I wanted to cut more? Yes, but I was only able to work at less than 15% of the budget. So Boo-hoo. Boo-hoo. I'm not quite sure what else they wanted to go. 72% of this is off to the other side. We were able to plus up defense and the veterans, but that non-defense without veterans is actually sure. lower than what we spent in 2022. I think we got to look at where the victories are. We don't spend another four trillion. We uh, we allow them to keep going forward right. until um, January. But you got those extraordinary measures. I think if we got a new president in there and a new and a Senate majority, we're going to finally be able to tackle this. I would like to look right. at everything and put us on. Right now, there's the sentence buried well within the video i would like to look at everything this is right if you paid into social security and uh your entire fucking life he'd like to look at uh carving off a slice and paying for some other shit with it and as senate majority we're going to finally be able to tackle this i would like to look at everything and put us mm -hmm. on a better path this is just the first step right because at this point you guys only control republicans only control one half of one branch of government <laughs> excuse me one moment But you can try if you want to with the other stuff now because it'll be a two hour stream. So at four o'clock, she can get it. The white, there's the pink one and the white one, the, the pill and the stuff that's already a liquid. The, all, the one that's already liquid, she has not had yet. She just had the one that I had to make a mocktail into a thing. So, excuse us, we have to triage a cat for a moment. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. She's exhausted. Poor thing. Um, my, my cat is sick. She's not, she's not doing well. It makes me sad. <laughs> okay. Back to where we were. Hmm. <laughs> so for you to get what you got was great for the most part, because, you know, the Republicans did much better in this than the Democrats did. Obviously. Obviously. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and to your point, uh, Joe Biden never wanted to negotiate, but you forced his hand. Yeah, you're so badass. You got him in there and he, you were going to make him negotiate. And this, this whole thing of you doing 5% of 15% and focusing on that and then suspending the debt ceiling entirely instead of raising it to a specific amount and allowing uh, other appropriations to be um, untethered to the debt ceiling between now and then. Uh, yeah, no, uh, it, it sounds great. It sounds like, yeah, it sounds like you, you, you totally fucked them. However, because there are going to be, you know, a bunch of Republicans mm. on the big vote are going to vote no. You're going to need a bunch of Democrats to say, you know what? I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm going to vote with Kevin McCarthy. Well, normally when you make an... When, when it's the other way around. Most Democrats are like, can we vote for the fucking thing? We know that there's going to be concessions because we lost half the House and they've got a hair's breadth control over it. But we're not going to fucking wreck the entire country over a pissing contest, especially when we've already achieved so much with our other bills and it doesn't claw back any of the funds from the Inflation Reduction Act or any of those things, which have already elevated um, our spending to a closer to our ultimate goals. Uh, you know, Three steps forward and one step back is not a loss. I don't care what anybody fucking says. When you come to an agreement with two different parties, you have people on both parties vote for it. But the difficulty that's different than any time before is the Democrats will tell you there's nothing in the bill for them. Nothing. <laughs> right, because they're trying to, yes. Uh, and I don't know if you're aware of it, the, the uh, Br'er Rabbit um, would often say things like, don't throw me in that briar patch. It's a... It's a classic story. I hope you enjoyed The it. president numerous times, he kept asking for tax increases, new government programs, and I just said no. And he says, well, there's nothing in it for us to vote for. I said, well, there's debt ceiling increase we can go forward on. I'm not sure people want to go past that deadline and interest rates go up and others. Right. I think this is a good... Go past that de deadline and interest go up and others? Go past that deadline and interest rates go up. 
Oh, I say farted. Sorry. I didn't realize that was the, yeah, if you'll notice. On. I'm not sure people want to go past that deadline and interest rates go up and others. Right, right. I think this is a good first step, but we can go much further. And I have a plan for that coming forward where we can look at the entire budget and tackle our problems, especially in a bipartisan way. This is reasonable. This is sensible, but it's also a responsible thing to do. And that's why Brian Kilmeade is confused. It's going to be a nail biter. Uh, it says Fox has learned that. It says right here on my paper is uh, going to be a nail biter. It's always a nail biter when they send me to to Chili's during happy hour. And we expect uh, Fox expects 240 between 240 and 270 votes for yes. Uh, and the New York Post writes it doesn't starve the beast, but rolls back and limits. It's a decent deal. Meanwhile, there's something else you got to do, and that's juggle multiple issues, Mr. <laughs> Speaker. The, uh, the Chairman Comer has asked you to call FBI Director Christopher Wray and get him to turn over documents linking Joe Biden to an alleged $5 million scheme thanks to a whistleblower who stepped forward and told his story in what I think is a 302, which is this story is all written down. They want to get the documentation. Christopher Wray has given the old Heisman. You tried to get him to do something. There's going to be a conversation today. What could you tell us? What could you tell us about the thing? About Christopher Ray cooperating at some point with which something he has to constitutionally do with Comer. Look, we, Comer subpoenaed the document that he's requested. We have mm -hmm. jurisdiction over the FBI, which they seem to act like we do not. I personally... Yeah, but Congress does not get to micromanage politically heavy investigations headed by the FBI because that would be a recipe for fucking disaster. Called uh, Director Ray and told him he needs to send that document. Today is the deadline. So let me not just tell you, let me tell Director Christopher Ray right here, right now. If he misses the deadline today, I am prepared to move contempt charges in Congress against him. Yeah, you don't have the votes to do that. Just, just but good luck. We have jurisdiction over this. He can send. No, you don't. Not if he's in, even if he's currently, if it's in, if any of that shit is involved in a current investigation, no, you don't. Does that document, we have the right to look at that. Republicans and Democrats alike in that committee. And if. No, you don't. He does not follow through with the law. We will move contempt charges against Christopher Ray and the you FBI. Know what he says, they Mr. are not Speaker, above the law. Mr. Speaker, you, but what does he say to you when you told him to do this? He came back and said, if the reports are correct, well, this is a speculative document. It's unverified. So I'm not comfortable handing it over. What, what do you say when he says that? We had, we had a conversation and I'm part of Gang of Eight. I, I see sensitive. Here's, here's what I want to know. Why can't they uh, isolate Kilmeade's fucking audio? Documents all the time. I told them he could redact certain parts of that, names and others, so we wouldn't know methods but we have a right to see it. He does not have the right to choose what he can and cannot show us. Yes, he does. We oversee the FBI. Yes, as an organization, you do not get to micromanage cases. I, I don't know why any of them think this is... This makes any fucking sense. And if he thinks differently, he will soon see a contempt charge in Congress against the director. There is enough. By the way, a uh, Trump appointee. I'd like to, like to add. <laughs> Trump put Ray in. So it's nice to watch this and just fucking popcorn it, you know. Problems in the FBI, and I am not going to sit back and allow yeah. him to ignore this. We. I will not be ignored. He will get this document. He has not denied that the document's not there. He knows that there. He has not denied that the document is not there. Okay. There's a document and we have a responsibility to see it. Let's talk about the uh, 2024 race. We had Asha Hutchinson on our show earlier. He says he's going to New Hampshire and Iowa. Mm -hmm. We know that Ron DeSantis is kicking off his campaign today. And we're very excited about all these campaigns because we get to send Brian out to all these places and we don't have to see him for months. Hey, going to Iowa and he's... I'm not kidding. Like that, both of them are so fucking happy because this dipshit is on the trail, baby. He's gonna, what is it? How many How many cities in three, three days? 12 cities in three, three days. Three states. And then. 
Pay attention, you dits. And uh, Sean Hannity's going to have a... a <laughs> Deuce, he's like, am I the only one that does the fucking homework? Um, sit down with, with uh, President Trump in a town hall on Thursday for his show. So what do you think of the race so far? Well, I think a lot of people are getting in with a lot of different ideas, but the one... Yeah, this is very well said. It's very... Yeah. The thing I do know America loves is they love those Trump policies that made America stronger, and we yearn for that back in this house and back in this country. So I think having debates is healthy, but at the end of the day, we know for foremost that but what Biden has done. We know foremost. But at the end of the day, we know for foremost that. For foremost. I see. I'm sorry. I, I, I misunderstood what you're saying. Foremost. For the most part. But what Biden has done to us, getting us out of Afghanistan, collapsing that, harming us around the world. 13 Wait a minute. Getting us out of Afghanistan, collapsing that. W w collapsing what? If we're not there and the government can't exist without us, the fuck are we doing there in the first place? And why would we want to stay? Are you fucking nuts? In new gold star families, brought us inflation by Democrats in charge, opened. Brought us inflation by Democrats in charge. I think he's going back to the growth of the Chinese economy under Clinton. Border where we can't control fentanyl is now killing more Americans at any time in history. We well, it's a new drug. It certainly, it's not like we have a, a graph across, you know, who can remember, who can forget the, the fentanyl wave of 1827. We need a new president with a new direction. So what, you can have the debates, but the end of Okay, so not Trump. I see. For the day, we need one person that's going to help lead us to the, the change. All right. We need one person that's going to help l l lead us to the change. Because if Trump gets in again, that's what the dollar will be worth. <laughs> a couple of nickels and a dime. Uh, Speaker McCarthy, thank you very much for joining us. Thank it's going to be a very busy week for you. Oh, man, this is going to be crazy. Um, and it is. And we're going to be here uh, right along with you while this nuttiness happens. It's going to be adorable. If you thought the the speaker vote was hilarious and embarrassing and stupid, wait till you see the debt ceiling vote and then the next speaker vote, which they're going to force because, I guess, fuck him. And, uh, and now he doesn't have, like, the same leverage, I guess, over the um, over Gates and those assholes because they're already on the committee. Can't take them off before he gets taken down. So, oh, it's going to be so good. It's just going to be so, so good. <laughs>